Hi there, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing an analysis and valuation of Daseki Inc. Let's get started. So Daseki is essentially a transportation solution specialist. And what they explain here is that they have a focus on highly complex logistics services. This means complex hauls such as high value or over dimensional loads. You can see an example right there on the image. They have more specialized equipment with highly trained drivers that are trained to handle that specialized equipment. And they have a lot of coordination around licensing, hauling permits, local officials, and escort vehicles even. If you see a truck carrying an oversized load, for example, sometimes it has escort vehicles that are going around it just to warn everyone on the road, right? So this is just something that makes the Seki different from other trucking companies. There are many out there and there are many that are bigger than Daseki, but Daseki specializes. And if you are looking for these very specific transportation requirements, you may consider them over other companies because of how specialized they are. Now, at a glance, these numbers for the end of the 2022 fiscal year are their total revenue being 1.77 billion, their free cash flow 135.8 million and they have a lot of tractors a lot of drivers and their business is essentially divided into specialized solutions and flatbed solutions and you also see that the company owned tractors versus the owner operator and brokerage and logistics set segments are um, a pretty diverse pie in terms of how the revenue is provided right some of these are asset heavy others are asset light so that's important there's a little mix there that's important to them so now they had a really good 2022 year they had a lot of revenue growth 2023 is probably not going to be that great there's a lot of macro factors that went into trucking being a great business for 2021 and 2022 with everything that happened in the world regarding supply chains regarding inflation. This may not continue in the same way in 2023 and beyond. So revenue growth was 13.9% before. This time, it's probably not going to be that. However, they are committed to accelerated de deleveraging. This means lowering their total debt. And they essentially want to generate more of a foundation in these years, right? where they want to ha still have a strong 2023, even though it's not going to be this amazing uh, year like 2022 was. And they also repurchased 30% of their outstanding common shares during the fourth quarter of 2022. That is insane. If you were an owner of Daseki before this share repurchase, you probably saw your the total value of any share you own go up by such a significant amount because they repurchased 30%. So that is significant to note. They do have this emphasis on giving return to shareholders, which we like to see. Now, they want to deleverage. We'll see here that from fiscal year 21 to 22, their total debt went up, their net debt went up, their net leverage went up in their net debt to EBITDA ratio, essentially. So now their target is shown to be 1.5 to 2 times for ongoing operations. This is still less than what is going on here, right? And this is for their gross leverage, not their net leverage, which is great. We want to see less debt overall. Why? Because that means that if the company were ever to be liquidated, where the stockholders are going to be some of the last people to receive the money, it's whatever is left over after paying any credit holders, any debtors, etc. And then whatever's left over is paid to the stockholders. So it's very important to see these net debt ratios or net leverage ratios be in, on the lower end, right? So we like seeing that and it gives a little bit of value back to shareholders, you know, because you're not buying into all this debt as well. You're buying into less debt now. So this is good to see. Now, they're saying here that after a record 2022, they're going to have flat to low single digit growth. I personally wouldn't be too surprised if they have a decrease in total revenues. So this is a conservative revenue assumption, but this could even be worse. 
depending on how the macro situation looks like, because there are factors that the Seki doesn't have control over, such as supply chains or inflation or whatever happens with the world and with the way the products they ship move that could affect their revenue in unforeseen ways, right? And this shows that essentially they are going to have to focus on other things. They focus on share buybacks. They're focusing on repaying on paying off some debt. So their capital expenditures are probably going to go up because they are essentially refinancing things. They're investing in company assets in order to have a more sustainable future. And they're also going to deploy some of that free cash flow in order to pay down debt. So this is important. Now, let's talk about their finances. And I really, really like their annual reports because they break down revenues by all these different segments. They break down operating expenses by all these different segments as well. I think it's really cool. It's probably one of the better and more complete annual reports I've ever seen. Good job, accounting team. Now, the basically the revenue has been increasing steadily from 2020, which I know I'm blocking with a camera, but this column represents 2020, all the way to 2021 and 22. You've seen a significant increase in revenue. A lot of this has been through fuel surcharges, essentially, as the price of fuel goes up, they pass that down to the consumer, right? You have to pay for the fuel you use. Also, they, the logistics segment has been growing a lot. The owner-operator segment has been growing a lot, while the company freight has actually stayed flat. So that's important to note. And if you were to buy Daseki, it's important to drill down a little bit into these numbers or these revenue segments and see just what this means, right? Um, there's not enough time here, and it's a little bit out of the scope of the video to explain all of this, but I think it's very important as an owner to understand what all the revenue segments mean. And the same goes for the operating expenses, right? The salaries have actually stayed decently flat. The fuel has gone up, but again, they seem to be passing that to the consumer a lot or to their clients a lot. But essentially, they do have increasing expenses, which makes sense. It matches increasing revenue and their income from operations. Well, you'll see that this margin is very tight. When you have your total revenue be $1.77 billion and then your income from operations not even be $100 million, a little less, your margins are incredibly tight. Of course, that makes sense. You're a business that employs a lot of people, that has a lot of equipment, that does a whole lot of things regarding that capital intensive business. So these are tight margins and this is something you should note, right? And margin expansion is something that you also want to look at because a quality company will want to increase these margins over the course of its operating history. And the net income margins, once again, they're also very tight, but you can see 2020 maybe being an outlier year due to the global situation, but in 2021 and 2022, it seemed to be pretty similar, right? So this is something where maybe if you were doing a deep dive into the psyche, you may look 10 years before 2020, right? You may look all the way to 2012, all the way to 2022, and you may just compare the margin, the net income margin. Has the Seki's net income margin been improving or has it been decreasing actually? And that is something to take a note of. That's something that's going to be very important because again, their margins are razor thin. Out of 1.7 uh, billion in revenue, they only have 50 million left in net income. So that's very important. Now, I want to forecast the cash flows in order to do a discounted cash flow model. Now, their free cash flow generally has resulted in 5% of revenue. Essentially, 5% of all the revenue that Daseki makes gets turned into free cash flow, which is cash from operations minus capital expenditures for these purposes. You can add net debt as well, but it's hard to calculate this. And we're assuming that they're going to pay down debt, as they were saying, but we don't know by how much. So I'm going to use a simplified formula simply because it's a little hard to calculate debt repayments or them taking out debt. Now, this 5% seems to be a little conservative, right? Because generally they've had a little bit more than 5%, but it's historically consistent and it gives us a little bit of a margin here for error, right? To just say, okay, instead of this 5.26%, I'm going to just trim that decimal and just say 5% of revenue gets turned to free cash flow. And I'm going to run with that prediction. Now, what's happening here? Well, in 2023 and 2024, I pulled analyst estimates for revenue, 
which are saying that revenue is going to drop about 7%, then recover about 8 9%, and then from there, I'm going to grow it at 2% for 2025, 2026, and in perpetuity, a perpetual growth rate of 2%, okay? Now, with a required rate of return of 11%, which is 1% more per year than the market, assuming it gives a 10% return per year, the fair value of the Seki would be $20.58. However, we have to adjust for debt. So, giving in the net debt value and subtracting that from the total value, we would have a fair value post-debt of $7.08 with net debt included, with an 11% rate required rate of return and a 2% perpetual growth rate. Now, the Seki is really close to this number. And again, this growth rate is a little conservative. I'm giving them a drop in revenue for 2023, while their predictions internally in the company are saying that they're going to have flat to very low single-digit growth, right? And I'm also giving them maybe a slow amount of revenue growth, especially in 2025 and 2026, because before they've actually had really good revenue growth. They've had it in the upper single digits. So it's important to note that this is a conservative estimate, but my conservative estimate is giving me $7.08. Right now, as of June 27, 2023, it's at $7.16. So I'm not far off, especially this is pretty close to the fair value. It is a small cap company. It is a $325 million company, essentially, which is interesting to note because once again, their debt is lower than their market cap, but also their revenue is way higher than their market cap. So they're trading at a pretty low price to sales. They're a capital intensive business. So it's very interesting that they're trading at such a low market cap, right? Their P ratio is 16. So this is something to take a look at as well. Maybe if you're interested in P ratios or EV to EBITDA, it would be interesting to compare it to its own history or to competitors using the P and EV to EBITDA ratios. But essentially, Daseki seems to be a quality business with a lot of growth potential. Stock buybacks and deleveraging will unlock extra value in the coming quarters and years, free cash flow allowing. Essentially, if they decide to deploy that free cash flow in order to keep buying back shares and keep uh, paying down that debt, there will be more value unlocked, right? That calculation of discounted cash flow will give more value, even if the revenue growth is not that great or the free cash flow growth is not that great. The time will come for those with patience and upside may even exist at this moment, though with a little more risk. If you see here, Daseki has been at five at that $5 range before, even a little lower, though 2020 again is an outlier. But even recently, it was at that upper $5 range. So that would have proven a buying opportunity, especially if this number holds true, right? So essentially, the time will come. The time will come if you have patience, maybe... Daseki has a bad quarter, and that can be a buying opportunity. And But something to note is that low operating and net profit margins do mean that as a capital-intensive business, the risk is not necessarily always low. A recession of some sort or just a general economic slowdown could affect their margins in the sense of giving them a negative year in net income or even, even worse, operating earnings. So it's important to note that businesses like this are not risk-free, and that is something you're also buying into, and that's why I'm stressing that even though Daseki can be fairly priced right now, especially if your predictions are of higher revenue growth than mine, then you're still buying into a lot of risk. So it's important to note that, right? Because we want to focus on risk first and then on opportunity. So I just want to say here that patience pays off. Maybe you're interested in Daseki right now, maybe you're interested in them later, or not at all if it doesn't fit your portfolio, but buying at the right price will give you greater gains for lesser risk. That may happen with the Seki, that may happen with other very high quality stocks. It's just important to be patient because that will pay off a lot. Now, I hope you learned a lot with this video and I thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or want me to cover any particular stocks, please comment down below. I will take a look and I will reply to all your comments. Now, once again, thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. And with that said, I hope you have a great rest of your day.